Hello everyone, welcome to OpenCon 2021. Thank you for dropping in and, and viewing my lightning talk. My name is Candice Vanderwer. I'm an instructor here at Cleveland State University and I have a little bit of experience in adopting an OER for my own courses. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of OER from uh, different perspectives. So as you are aware, OER adoption includes a considerable effort for many instructors. They may be using resources from uh, traditional publishers, things like test questions, study guides, PowerPoint presentations, and moving to an OER means either creating those new or, or, or finding new ones at the OER Commons. So in order to justify this added effort, it's really necessary for us to illustrate what kind of benefits might be in store for those instructors. So I'm going to discuss uh, benefits from three different levels, students, instructors, and institutions. Let's get in there. All right, so from the student perspective, the obvious direct benefit for the student is the cost advantage, right? Not having to pay for a uh, hundred to two hundred dollar book is a significant advantage. However, we also see that students report pretty high uh, levels of satisfaction with OER resources and they perceive them to be equal to equal in quality to other books. Now we would like to see grades being improved through the OER adoption, but our findings are somewhat nuanced. Um, we have not been able to establish a robust relationship between OER adoption and student course grades. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If grades have not been significantly uh, improved or uh, diminish, so if there's no significant effect on course grades, then this could indicate that the course is of the same caliber, of the same integrity as those with traditional textbooks. However, we have been able to establish a link between DF and withdrawal grades. Those have been significantly reduced for all students after an OER adoption. So this uh, indicates that while OER adoption can improve student satisfaction, it does so without sacrificing academic integrity. So let's talk about a few of the instructor benefits of OER too. So many instructors believe that OER textbooks are of the same or better uh, quality than traditional, text, uh, traditional textbooks. And they also express um, a benefit in being able to start the course material from day one, you know, not waiting for two weeks for somebody to gain the textbook themselves. But I also want to identify some benefits in terms of student evaluation scores and some funding uh, benefits. So let's start with student evals. So student evaluation of instruction or SEI, these are numbers or uh, metrics that are used in many universities for promotion and tenure procedures. So an instructor's SEI scores are generally considered when they go up for reappointment or when they are looking to continue employment or want to be promoted um, or even when they apply for jobs. These are very important scores. Um, but few studies have really investigated how OER adoption has, if it has any effect on these SEI scores. So I'm going to talk about two studies um, and then also the impact of it. So Wojtek and Grisset um, a few years ago used scenario vignettes to measure students' perceptions of the instructors that adopt an OER versus um, instructors that had a, a, a costly textbook. And they found that students rated the faculty higher in terms of kindness, creativity, and encouragement when they had adopted an OER. Uh, we also saw a pseudo randomly assigned study. So in this case, the the teachers had or the instructors had some kind of uh, uh, say in whether they used the OER or did not use the OER. Um, and then they and then these researchers compared the SEI scores amongst those instructors, and they found that instructors using the OER were perceived as more knowledgeable, passionate, likable, encouraging, and kind. And these are all really favorable uh, perceptions in terms of students on the instructors. Uh, and this is meaningful because the SEI scores are uh, a big part of an instructor's position, right? They have kind of a lot of pull on promotion and tenure and reappointment. These scores are often correlated with um, 
uh, factors outside of this of the instructor's control. Things like the instructor's gender have been correlated with SEI scores, as well as difficulty in the course or the student's GPA. Um, they've even been used punitively by students to punish instructors that have very difficult courses. So if there is a way for an instructor to improve their SEI score without compromising any kind of academic integrity, I think that many instructors would be uh, interested in that. So in that case, you know, it's, it's necessary to illuminate or illustrate these benefits for the instructor who's really looking to take on a lot of work in adopting the OER. In addition, some institutions have been recognizing efforts uh, to adopt uh, affordable resources. Um, some institutions offer honorariums, which are kind of a, a cash benefit right there, as well as grants that can provide a monetary benefit, um, as well as gratitude letters from the administration uh, recognizing the instructor's efforts. Now, these this is what we do here at Cleveland State. Uh, if you adopt a, an OER, you will often get a recognition letter from the provost. And this letter is specified to be included in your teaching dossier so that, you know, your efforts in, in supporting this institutional priority are recognized, you know? So while, you know, you may not be able to, to show it to necessarily everybody, at least this promotion and tenure committee can see that, that this is an effort being made by the instructor. Uh, in terms of institutional benefits, there are several. Um, there's, first of all, providing access to education, which is clearly an, uh, an institutional priority for many schools. But beyond that, we also see that there are opportunities for benefits in terms of accreditation and achievement gaps. So OER adoption allows for collaboration and standardization between and amongst institutions, right? The more that there is collaboration in terms of test bank questions or course objectives, um, this allows us to compare our students to other students in other institutions. And this gives us the the opportunity to demonstrate innovative teaching priorities as well as uh, comparable assurance of learning data, which is necessary for a lot of accreditation uh, institutions. In addition, this, you know, pulling back from that la last study that looked at the effects on D, F, and W grades, while D, F, and W grades decreased for all students, they doubled at a, a rate twice as much for Pell students. So those students receiving Pell support or, you know, your most at-risk students, you, we have seen in, that OER has a uh, significant effect on reducing those withdrawal rates. So what does that mean for us? How do we use this information meaningfully? Well, communicating these benefits for all groups proliferates the idea of adoption. You know, if an instructor realizes that what they adopt is going to have a meaningful impact on their position and their uh, status in the, the organization, they may be more likely to take on that, that high load. So I would begin uh, discussions with instructors by asking what their current pains are with their traditional resources. I think you'll find that many of them uh, find the system to be flawed, you know, to have two different LMS systems and have them communicating. You know, just identifying those pains uh, first would be necessary. And then consider what obstacles are keeping instructors from adopting the OER. You know, they may say, yeah, I would like to adopt an OER, but this takes time away from time it could be spent, you know, researching or developing different kinds of courses or, or, or grading or anything like that. You know, see if we can identify those obstacles and then work from there. And then how can we align the benefits of OER with the benefits of the instructor? How can we reward them directly for these um, added efforts? So thank you very much for listening to my talk. Uh, my email is here at the bottom. I will be on the panel on Friday. Uh, but it has been uh, wonderful to be a part of this conference, and I wish you all the best. <laughs>